What's up, Hardy? Amen. You got it. Good to see you, brother. Thank you. Yeah, my first swab member. Yep, yep, yep. Not at church. I'm proud to say I'm a member of Cosmopolitan Church, and my pastor is an avid collector. And I want to thank him for the support and allowing us to come into your home and experience the energy in your space from all the wonderful art. How many years has it been now that you've been collecting? Oh, I really don't know, Andre. Just over the years, I became much more avid one, I guess, within the last, uh, really, the last 10 years. But I, I have gathered one of my travels I, from in Asia and places, and I brought back pieces. I started out uh, basically with an Asian uh, emphasis. Then I started getting involved in the trips to Africa and so forth. And I started doing an Afro-Asiatic basis of my collection, which of course is the center of where all the cultural experience comes from, where life itself evolves out of the Afro-Asiatic experience. And then of course, lately, I've become totally focused on the Afrocentric uh, tradition. Um, have even purchased a number of pieces from you. But uh, my focus now is, and I have gotten more avid, it's, you know, it becomes a very, uh, a, it becomes a magnetizing and experience when you really get into collecting because it enables you to uh, to really invest and ingest, if you will, the kind of creative spirit of others. And I think that the artwork is an articulation of what we are as a people. And it's an, it's an energy that exudes from it and it speaks a very language and the <coughs> majesty and meaning of all great art uh, has to do with the fact that it tells a story to each individual. And, and it's a distillation of, of our historicity, you know, where we came from. And so when you look at it, you draw from it a level of, uh, of creative uh, uh, constructs about how one views the universe. And I think especially as African American people now, it's critical for us to have this kind of documentation and this kind of creative inspiration and articulation of where we came from. And I think for those of us who are involved, as you say, energetically and aesthetically in this pursuit, uh, it is uh, important because what art does, art continues to resonate and vibrate, and it does not lose its currency. I mean, 300, 400, 500 years ago, it speaks a language that is existential, that is contemporary, that is modern as today, and that is the genius of art. And you cannot say that about uh, any other thing almost. A lot of things get dated. You know, clothes get dated. Automobiles get dated. Various fashions get dated. But art itself is eternal. It is a thing that, that continually articulates something as universality. And matter of fact, art is probably, as the philosophers would say, you get a kind of universalization in the particular. And as you look at it, you can extrapolate from it that which is going to give you a kind of a creative, uh, uh, as it were, a meal. I mean, an, an art is like feeding on something. You know? <clears throat> people eat, you know, I'm a vegetarian, of course, and I'm going to throw that in just for all the people. But the point is, is that you dine on it, you know. It is a gustatorial, aesthetic experience in the way that you ingest art. That's what I started out by saying. And so in that regard, I, I find art to be uh, something that never grows tired. And sometimes you can just come in the room and you can come in here and you can sit down and you can go to all kinds of places. You don't have to go geographically or spatially, but you go spiritually, you go emotionally, and, and you see that and, uh, and just listen to it resonate in the inner core of your being. And that's, I think, what it does. So in the secret places and the in those intimate moments of, of private disclosure, uh, you find art as a, as, as, a, as a very caring companion to you. And he who really has substantial art, or he who has an artistic uh, involvement or, or an appreciation for the genius of creativity, that person in the most sublime sense is really never alone because he's companion. As a matter of fact, uh, some of my um, artwork, the representative forms here, that we see work that sits by Buber and, uh, and of course, Woodrow Nash and, and so forth. Uh, people have come here 
and they have made jokes about the fact that you know, you're going to wake up at night and they see forms and, and, they're, and they're, as if it's living. And in fact, it is living. And sometimes I walk by and I look and there's when the lights are out and you see individuals here and you, and you just see the silhouette or the shading. And for a moment, you know, in a real sense, that you're not alone. And, and, and so it, it's, it's a very, very, uh, it's a very, very personal kind of experience, and yet it's one that, that, I, that I find uh, enriching and nurturing and nourishing as I continue to, uh, to find ways and just to look at it. And I think an important thing about all of it is, it's just when it gets Boubert, for, you know, when you look at this piece, Boubert, it's, um, you know, it, it's amazing. The, the genius of someone, it just flows, it, it's life, and when you look at it, and that's what it does, it's, a, it, it, it's, it's steel, and yet it's life, you know, steel life, and you know, and, and that's the essence of it, that's the sublimity of it, and so in, in this consciousness, you sit and you articulate that, and the movement, and the energy, and the motion, that's there, and it is an embrace of the universal, uh, of a universal genius almost, to, to see this painting in the way they are doing this. And so that's the kind of thing that you marvel at. You cannot pay for that. I mean, now, of course, we know art is an investment. And that's another thing that we look at, is certainly in the community, and one of the things that you do in your very incisive analysis and your, and your commentaries as you hold so many things at Gashard Gallery that has become a really kind of a mecca and a kind of a meeting place for the literati, the, uh, the intelligentsia, uh, the esthetes, uh, the artistic community uh, coming together as you hold and you present these artists to them in essentially a social forum. So people get a chance to see the artist and they see how he is and listen to what he envisioned and what he articulates. And of course what he articulates is one thing. When I get out of it, it may be something else. I mean, for instance, we have here this picture. This is, I mean, that's picture, but this, this creation is called The Jungle, and it's by Andre Bouchard, uh, who, who, who created this, essentially, I guess. For me, he thought I needed one. He saw the space, and so he created this large portrait, and it's a jungle, and it speaks to a variety of things, whatever. It's the, the coloration of it, the, 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 the kind of brilliance. It just seems vibrant, and so there is a kind of a... Uh, of a resonating kind of richness uh, to this painting. And of course, these ideas of whatever you can construct and it changed the collapse of the African American experience. You break out of that, the jungle, you can imagine all kinds of things. I can look at it and think of, you know, follow the drinking going. I can see us breaking out of the shackles of, of the whole experience of slavery as we leave the South, as we keep running, going through. The dogs may be after us, but we're continuing to go. We're pulling each other along. There is a sense of community here. There is an involvement here. There is history here. And so when you look at all of this, you see the variegated uh, experience of the African-American tradition here. 